Good evening children. Today our topic is respiratory system in patient. The avian flight requires a continuous supply of oxygen. Therefore, the respiratory system in patient is more complicated and highly developed when compared to the other group of vertebrates. And respiration takes place by a pair of lungs. These lungs are attached with the other structures known as the air sacs, which is a unique character present in the aves. Then the muscular diaphragm is present which separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity that is it is absent. And next one what are the parts are present in the respiratory system here. There are three parts are present. One is a respiratory tract. Second one is a respiratory organ. And the third one is the air sac. Now I will explain now. These are three parts one by one clearly here. What are the parts are present in the respiratory tract? See external nostrils, nasal sacs, internal nares, pharynx and it is also known as a buccopharyngeal cavity and it glottis, larynx, trachea and syrinx. Okay. So I will explain here. This is the external nostrils. I will explain here. This is the beak. Here at the base of the beak external nostrils are present. These external nostrils opens into a narrow space known as the nasal sac. And this nasal sac opens into this buccopharyngeal cavity by internal nostrils. And next one, at the buccopharyngeal cavity here, a lid-like structure is present known as the glottis. Okay, this is the glottis. Now, here, the buccopharyngeal cavity opens into a wide uh, expanded chamber known as the larynx. This is the larynx. Okay, now, here, this larynx again opens in leads or opens into a elongated tubular structure known as the trachea. This is the trachea. Okay. Now, at the posterior end of the trachea, here a sound box is present known as the, this is the syrinx. This is a special character present in the birds. Now, this trachea, after giving us this syrinx, it divides into two two branches, right and left branches. Each branch enters into the lungs. These are the lungs. Okay. These are the lungs. Now explain about the lungs. Here a pair of lungs are present in the thoracic cavity. Dorsal side of the, the lungs, the covering is absent. But at its ventral side here, it has a membranous covering known as a pulmonary neosis, which is attached to the sternal ribs by by the muscles okay now come to the what are the structures again uh, present in the lungs we will see here this is the trachea okay after giving us the syrinx the trachea is divided into primary brachia right and left primary bronchus these primary bronchus actually enters into the lungs okay now, after entering into the lungs, the primary bronchus divided into secondary bronchus. And secondary bronchus again divided gives rise the, this is the tertiary branch. This tertiary branchus enters into the air sac. Enters into the, these are the air sacs. Okay. Now, I will explain about the air sacs. Next, let, let us go about the air sacs here. How many air sacs? There are nine large air sacs are present. Four are paid uh, air sacs. That means four into two, eight. And one unpaid. This is eight plus one, nine. So there are nine large air sacs present in the pigeon. Let us see. What are the paid air sacs are present here? This both. One cervical air sac. This is the one. And next one. Uh, this is the second one, a pair of anterior thoracic air sac. And the next one, again, third one, a pair of posterior thoracic air sacs. And the next one, the fourth one, are the a pair of abdominal air sac. Like this, this is the one, this is the second one, this is the third one, this is the fourth one. Like this, four pairs of air sacs are present, four into two, eight. And let us come to the, what is the unpaid air sac here? This is the, see, this is the center one, this is the center one it is the unpaid single air sac is present it is known as a interclavicular air sac like this here see all these air sac paid 
see one two three four all these air sacs are attached or are present inside the lungs now see this um, primary bronchus divide enters into the lungs that primary bronchus divide into secondary second into tertiary that tertiary bronchus enters into the air sac like this enters into the air sac okay and now this tertiary air uh, bronchus after entering to the air sac and they divided into small uh, uh, structures known as the blood capillaries these blood capillaries are attached with the blood capillaries present in the wall of the air sac now here exchange of the gases takes place between the uh, blood capillaries present in the wall of the air sac and the <clears throat> blood capillaries present in the air sac now this is a clear structure of the air sac let us i want to explain about the syrinx also so sometimes it comes uh, as a short question okay now see here this is the trachea okay at the base of the trachea the syrinx is present okay after giving this syrinx now this trachea is divided into primary bronchus and this primary bronchus enters into the lungs and again here in the lungs the air sacs are present now clear now this primary bronchus are divided into secondary tertiary this tertiary bronchus enters into the air sac now let us i want to say about the syrinx this is a syrinx okay now here the empty space space present in the syrinx is known as the tympanum see this is the trachea and it gives us a, a, a wide chamber known as the syrinx and after giving this syrinx this primary bronchus this bronchus divided into the right and the left primary bronchus okay now in the syrinx the empty space is present known as the tympanum okay now here this syrinx is supported by few tracheal rings and a few bronchial rings okay this syrinx is supported by few tracheal rings and a few branchial rings now here a uh, cartilage ring is present that is known as a pessilus this pessilus is uh, is covered by a membrane known as a semilunar membrane now again here this syrinx is supported by a syringeal muscles present at the lateral sides of the trachea and now here two membranes are present one is the external membrane and the internal membrane this internal membrane is present inner side of the trachea and next one the external membrane is present at the external side of the membrane external side of the trachea this is the structure of the uh, syrinx now how the sound is produced the by, by the by vibration of the semilunar membrane when the air enters through syrinx into the lungs here the membrane moves so with the movement of this uh, membrane the voice comes out and then the voice is controlled by the syringeal muscles present at the lateral walls or lateral sides of the syrinx this is about the syrinx uh, now let us the uh, next one the mechanism of the respiration here uh, the mechanism of respiration birds takes place uh, to in uh, two uh, stages when the birds are in resting stages and uh, when the birds are during the flight so when the birds are in resting stage here right these points only the contraction of the intercostal muscles lowers the sternum and don't write this point then when the sternum lowers the increases the thoracic cavity so when the thoracic cavity increases the pressure reduces in the lungs so when the pressure reduces in the lungs here the air uh, into the posterior air sac the air enters the air enters into the air sac from the respiratory tract that means um, trachea primary bronchus secondary bronchus tertiary and air sac okay now this so exchange of gases takes place in the air capillaries present in the air sacs okay now during the expression so here the thoracic the movement of the thoracic or abdominal muscles with the help of this movement the sternum rises so that uh, compression takes place in the air sacs so expansion of lungs takes place here the air present in the air sac here what happens it comes outside through the respiratory that means through lungs and the trachea larynx 
next one internal nets glottis and next one external nostrils look like this here the respiration takes place when the birds are in resting stage and when the birds are during flight here both inspiration and expiration occurs by the movement of the pectoral muscles okay this is a very simple one just practice the diagram with the side headings and in this uh, respiratory system the headings is also important one okay thank you